Beta-alanine is one of the few substances that has been scientifically proven to help sports performance. And we have enough evidence now to know what a safe as well as effective dose is. So in this video, I'm gonna explain how beta-alanine works, what sports it benefits most, what a safe dosage is, what side effects you could expect, and also what substance you can combine it with for even better effect. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from sportsinjuryphysio.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment of any type of sports injury, all done via video call. Have a look at the description of this video if you want to link to our website. Also, if you want to subscribe to our newsletter for weekly updates about the information we publish, have a look at the description of this video. I've put a link to the newsletter there. You probably have heard by now about lactic acid and how lactic acid builds up in your muscles when you do high intensity sport and exercise, and that kind of limits how long you can do that for. But your muscles also create hydrogen ions, and the hydrogen ions are also acidic, and they bring or push the acid acidity of the muscles up even further, which again interferes with how well those muscle fibers can contract, and eventually you've got to stop the exercise. This is why you can't keep on sprinting for 1,000 meters, but you can sprint for 100 meters. Beta-alanine is an amino acid that naturally occurs in our bodies, and that is transformed into a substance called carnosine. And carnosine actually stops the hydrogen atoms or ions from accumulating as quickly. So it doesn't stop it totally, but it just reduces how quickly it accumulates, which means that you could potentially... Um, perform for longer at a higher intensity the more of the carnosine you have. So the theory is if you can increase the amount of beta-alanine in your body, you can get more carnosine and you can exercise for longer. But does this actually work as the theory states it should? Yes, we do seem to have enough high-level research now to say that Beta-alanine likely works in this way because there is signs that it can improve performance. But because it works on limiting how many of the hydrogen ions accumulate, it's only really effective for exercise that requires the anaerobic energy system to work. So that's the one without oxygen. It's the one we work or we use for short, hard bursts of exercise. So think anything between 30 seconds of effort to 10, 12 minutes. If you go above 12 minutes, you usually start relying more on your aerobic system, which uses oxygen and things. And then you don't have that accumulation of hydrogen um, ions to the same extent. So events that this supplementation will be most useful for, obviously sprinting, team sports. If you think of typical football or soccer, you're standing still for a long time and then you have to sprint. And then you have to sprint. So it's short bursts. Um, they've done research on rowing. They've done research on high-intensity running of about a three-kilometer race. So anything that's short and sharp, beta-alanine may actually improve your performance. The research also shows that less well-trained individuals benefit more from beta-alanine than professional athletes or really well-trained people. There was an interesting survey in Australia where they sent out survey forms to all the Aussie football players in the country, and they found that 61% of them were using beta-alanine, but only 35% of them was actually using an effective dosage. So let's have a look at what the most effective dosage is to avoid side effects, as well as get the benefit. If you're finding this information useful, please remember to hit like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. One of the reasons beta-alanine is likely not on the banned list for sport is because it has been proven to be safe to take. And the only known side effect so far is reports of paresthesia when people take a too high dosage. Now, par paresthesia just means a feeling of pins and needles throughout the body. What the research has shown is that the dosage of around 3.2 grams per day for up to 24 weeks, so that's roughly six months, is a safe dosage. It does, doesn't cause any side effects. We do not have any long-term safety data, so we don't know what happens if you use it continuously for longer than that period of time. So I would suggest that, as with most of these things, you periodize it into your training year. So you're not using it all the time. You're just maybe using it during your final prep and your competition season, and then as that comes to an end, you take a break from it. You do your basic training and things without it, and then you ease back into supplementing as you're hitting those periods where you really need to perform. The research studies I consulted all used a dosage of between 3.2 to 6.4 grams 
per day for a period between 4 and 24 weeks. Now, it's not that useful for me when you tell me so many grams because I'm thinking, well, I'm a very big person. How much must I take compared to the little person next to me? So it's more useful to look at that as per, per kilogram body weight. Now, there was only one study that reported it in that way, which was 65 milligrams, not grams, milligrams, which would roughly translate to around 3.2 to 6.4 grams per person per day. When you look at products in Amazon, it's really important to notice whether they are reporting the amounts in grams or milligrams. I've been caught out in the past because it's easy when you're reading quickly to mistake it as the difference between getting an effective dose or actually overdosing with the stuff. So I've identified some products from Amazon that does fall within these limits that I've just spoken about. Have a look at the description. I've put links there. If you do develop pins and needles or paresthesia from it, it means the dosage you're taking as a one shot is likely too much. So the idea is then to split it up. So you can split it up in many little doses, take it throughout the day, or simply split it into three and take each with a meal. It does seem from the research that you've got to take beta alanine consistently for at least four weeks before you start seeing results. And then remember, we don't know what happens past 24 weeks. So remember to periodize and not just stay on the stuff. There's also evidence that if you combine beta alanine with sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda that we've got in our kitchens, it works even better. And the reason for this is the beta alanine works on the hydrogen ions, but the bicarbonate of soda seems to work on the lactic acid. So those are two systems that both can increase your acidity. And if you combine these systems or these substances, you're decrease, decreasing the acidity on two levels. So I've made a whole video about how to use bicarb and what the research shows about that. Because if you use too much bicarbonate or you time it wrong, it could really give you an upset stomach. So if you want to combine it with that or just use bicarb, have a look at the description of this video. I'll link to the other one in there. Brilliant. Hope you found that useful. Remember, if you need more help with an injury, you're welcome to consult one of the team via video call. If you've got any questions, ask them in the comments. And remember to hit like and subscribe. Really helps the channel. Take care.